Hi, I'm Marco Permunian from ItalianCitizenshipAssistance.com and this just so happens to be episode number 100 of the Italian Citizenship Podcast. So I wanted to thank everyone for supporting our podcast on behalf of myself, the ICA team, as well as Rafael Di Furia. We're so happy that the information that we have released over the course of the last few years has helped thousands of people in their journey to get Italian citizenship, and we're looking forward to release many more episodes. Here is the 100 more. This is the Italian Citizenship Podcast, hosted by Marco Permunian and Rafael Di Furia. Hello there, and welcome to another edition of the Italian Citizenship Podcast, presented by ItalianCitizenshipAssistance.com. Of course, we are back at it again with Italian attorney Marco Permunian. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I am doing great, thank you. And today we wanted to get into an episode that is another companion episode to a blog post on ItalianCitizenshipAssistance.com, How to Register Your Vital Records in Italy. We wanted to do this companion episode to give you also a little bit more of a, a feel uh, beyond just the words that are on the paper. Sometimes it's nice to have, or paper, <laughs> a screen rather. But Marco, a quick question for you. What would be a reason that a person would need to register their documents, their vital records, in Italy? What would be the, 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 the necessity that would bring a person to this point? Um, maybe we can start with people who are already Italian citizens. So no matter if they were born in Italy and emigrated to the U.S. or if they were born in the U.S. and got their Italian citizenship by descent, uh, for these people it might be necessary at some point in their lives to register some of their vital records in Italy. And I'll explain myself better. So once you are an Italian citizen, you, in theory, should be registered with the AIRE. The AIRE stands for uh, Registry of Italian Citizens, residing abroad and, and more precisely you should register if you if your intention is to live outside of italy for longer than 12 months so it goes without saying that an american who gets their italian citizenship by descent and, and intends to reside in the u.s without relocating to italy um, should register with the aire and being registered with the aire allows you to access the services of the italian consulate in your area. So for example, if you have to vote for the Italian elections, you do not have to travel all the way to Italy to vote, but you can do so through the Italian consulate. Or if you have to, for example, apply for your Italian passport or renew your Italian passport, you can do so through the Italian consulate if you are registered with the AIRE. But uh, more to the topic, if there are some major life events that need to be registered in Italy, so for which the Italian government needs to be made aware of, you can register the related vital records through the Italian consulate. That that's an obligation that you have. For example, if you get married, um, you should register your marriage certificate through the Italian consulate uh, in your area. And the Italian consulate will transfer your marriage record to the Italian municipality where you're registered with the AIRE. And the same goes for your uh, divorce record. Uh, if you get divorced, you should register your uh, divorce judgment via the Italian consulate in your area so that it gets registered in the municipality where you are registered with the AIRE. And finally, if you have a child, you should register their birth certificate through the Italian consulate so that they get registered in Italy in the municipality where you are registered with the AIRE. And by the way, this also gives you the ability to your child to become an Italian citizen uh, in the moment when the registration is done, as long as you register your child's birth before they turn 18. And why is it necessary for you, the Italian citizen residing abroad, to register your vital records in Italy? It's necessary because otherwise the Italian government wouldn't know that you got married, you got divorced, 
uh, you had a child. While if you are an Italian residing in Italy, the Italian government is automatically aware of those major life events because any major life events that occurs in Italy is registered instantly in an Italian municipality. But if you reside abroad, it's then your obligation to communicate to the Italian government that these major life events happened abroad and you do so through the registration of these very important vital records. And so just a quick follow-up question there. How do these all connect? Because you mentioned that you have to be uh, in contact uh, if you're living abroad with the Italian consulate and make sure that everything is in the IDA, that it's registered there. Um, but how does this all relate to municipalities in Italy? Because you mentioned also that if you're in Italy, that you'll take care of these things there. Is it one is in place of the other or uh, do they work together? How does that all go together? Uh, that's a very good question. Thanks for asking. So if you are an Italian residing in Italy, you are registered in basically the uh, population registry held by a single specific municipality. So the municipality where you live. So that's where you, where your vital records are registered if you reside in Italy. But if you reside abroad, there is a uh, registry, which is the IDA registry, um, which is jointly held by the Italian consulate in your area and one specific municipality in Italy, which is the municipality where you were living before you emigrated to the U.S. If, of course, you are an Italian citizen born in Italy who emigrated to the U.S. Otherwise, uh, if you are an American who got their Italian citizenship by descent, then the municipality in which you are registered with the Aire is the municipality of birth of your uh, ancestor who was born in Italy and that you used to apply for Italian citizenship by descent because evidently there is no uh, municipality where you were residing um, in Italy because most likely you never resided in Italy. So the Italian government will just use the municipality of birth of your Italian ancestor and register you there. So the registry, the Aire registry is held uh, jointly by the consulate and that municipality. And so say, for example, you're already an Italian citizen, you either got your citizenship by descent or 1948 case, whatever it may be, or you were born an Italian citizen and you relocated to somewhere in the U.S., for example. Say you do have one of these major life events, either birth of a child or you got married or uh, whatever it may be. And how is it that you actually go about registering your documents? Do you have to fill out a special form? Do you just send the document as it is? Is there anything in particular that you need to do to make sure that they receive the documents in the correct way? So every consulate has slightly different rules. So my first advice is to check the website of the consulate to see how they want your vital records to be submitted to them. Uh, normally, um, and I'm not saying that's the case for every single consulate, but normally they would want you to uh, download the forms that are necessary to um, initiate the registration, which are on their website. So you download the forms. Normally you have to include your name, your last name. Uh, if you're registering uh, the birth of the child, uh, they might want both of the spouses names, last names, and signatures, and um, even if the other spouse is not an Italian citizen, but otherwise, if you're only registering, for instance, your marriage record, uh, it might be sufficient that you sign the form and include all of your personal information, so the Italian citizen, and then uh, you have to just mail the consulate your uh, vital records. So there's no appointment and the registration is done entirely through the mail and the um, vital records that you provide the consulate with need to be in the longest format available. So for example, if you are submitting the birth certificate of your child, make sure that it's a long form, not for instance, a wallet size certificate or a short form certificate or a transcript. Um, for instance, in, New in the city of New York, all of these versions of a birth certificate exist. And also, if you are registering your uh, marriage certificate, make sure that you get the long format. And if 
it exists also the uh, marriage license. So not only the consulate wants the uh, certificate of marriage, but uh, when applicable, also the marriage license. And the reason behind that is that the consulate wants as many details as possible related to that life event. Also, these VITA records will need to be certified copies. I know in some states, um, informational copies exist. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want to get the consulate a certified copy of your birth certificate, a marriage record, divorce records, and the documents will also need to be apostilled because that's the only way for the Italian government to accept foreign um, documents, so documents that were issued uh, in another country, uh, which signed the Hague Convention, so the Convention on the International Convention on Apostilles. Um, and then the documents will also need to be translated into Italian, and you can um, just provide the consulate with regular translations, because normally the consulate will certify the translations uh, for you before they send the VITA records to the municipality where you're registered with the AIRE. And so we've spoken about these three different ways of really going about registering is that registering at an Italian consulate uh, if you're living abroad and maybe already an Italian citizen, uh, or if you are registering your documents at a municipality in Italy, or if you are having your documents registered after a 1948 case uh, through the local court. Generally speaking, how would this work to get all of your documents registered at these different places? And realistically, practically speaking, are there really any or many differences between the, uh, registering your documents at these different locations? So, so far, we talked about the situation of somebody who is already an Italian citizen, so they got their Italian citizenship, or simply the situation of an Italian citizen who moved abroad and needs to register their, their fighter records in Italy while residing abroad. But then uh, a lot of people, they ask us, um, so... I'm applying for dual citizenship by descent, and I'm already giving the consulate um, or the Italian municipality my uh, marriage record, my divorce record, my uh, minor children's birth certificate. So um, what what happens with those documents? Is there any extra step that need to be taken? And the answer depends on, um, on how you apply for citizenship by descent. So if you're applying for citizenship by descent via the Italian consulate, abroad where you reside and you are providing the consulate already with um, all of the vital records related to the uh, these major life events that we talked about. So your marriage record, divorce, judgment, and um, children's birth certificate. The consulate will basically not only make you an Italian citizen, but simultaneously register you with the IRA automatically and also automatically send the these vital records um, to the Italian municipality uh, where you are being registered with the IRS, so your marriage record, your uh, divorce judgment. The birth certificates for your children will be sent automatically when you're granted Italian citizenship by descent to the Italian municipality where you are, um, where you will be registered with the IRE. And basically, it's only your responsibility um, to provide the consulate with vital records related to future uh, potential life events. So if you get married again, if you have another child after you become an Italian citizen, then you basically have to do what we talked about so far in this episode. Um, also, the situation is very similar when you get Italian citizenship via an Italian uh, municipality. So you are uh, normally providing the municipality as part of the dual citizenship application process with uh, your marriage record, divorce record, um, your children's birth certificates. And the municipality will automatically um, register as part of the application process these VITA records, and the municipality will register these VITA records in the municipality where you are applying for citizenship, so not in the municipality of birth of your Italian ancestor, rather in the municipality where you are applying for Italian citizenship by descent. So for example, if, uh, our clients who go to Rovigo and apply for citizenship in the municipality where our office is located, um, 
the marriage record, their divorce records, will be registered in the municipality of Rovigo, and our clients will also be registered with the AIRE registry held by the municipality of Rovigo. And finally, uh, those clients who pursue citizenship through a 1948 uh, case, so through the court system, um, in that case, we only provide the court, because that's how you should proceed, um, with the birth certificate of the petitioner himself or herself. And we don't provide the court with the vital records related to subsequent life events. So we stop uh, at the birth of the petitioner. We don't provide the court um, um, the marriage record, the divorce record of the petitioner, uh, because these vital records will be registered after the court grants citizenship in the municipality of birth of the ancestor together with the judgment, together with the final judgment that grants citizenship. So in other words, the court is not really interested in knowing what happened after the birth of the petitioner because the court is basically interested in granting citizenship to the petitioner and then it's the attorney's responsibility to register these vital records in the municipality uh, where also the judgment is registered which is the municipality of birth of the Italian ancestor who was born in Italy. Well, thank you, Marco, for answering all of these questions and going into a bit of detail and uh, shedding some more light on this topic. And if anybody is interested in more information about how they can get Italian citizenship, how can they contact you and your team? People can contact us through our website, italiancitizenshipassistance.com, or give us a call. Our number is on the website. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, if you're interested in more episodes of the Italian Citizenship Podcast, be sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, as well as the audio only podcast, where we've created a large library of content that deep dives into the topics of Italian citizenship, as well as Italian real estate. Of course, if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, then that means you are also automatically subscribed to the Italian real estate podcast. But of course, Thank you so much again for joining us and Mr. Marco Permunian from ItalianCitizenshipAssistance.com. Thank you as well for joining us and making yourself available for this episode. And I am Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there and we will see you all next time. Later. Thank you. Thank you.